What's up guys, Caleb here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the LEGO Speed Champions 007 Aston Martin DB5. The set has 298 pieces, marketed for ages 8 and up, and will retail you for only $20 in the United States, which I personally think is a fantastic deal. This is only the second James Bond set that we have ever gotten, and actually released yesterday on August 1st. I was lucky enough to get the very last one in Barnes & Nobles yesterday. It went in literally like an hour and a half. All of them got sold out, so I got the last one there, thankfully. The front of the box says Aston Martin kind of driving through the smoke and dirt and stuff and it looks beautiful. It has the actual scale of one of the tires of the Aston Martin as well as a really cool side view of the car which I think looks really cool on the top there. The back of the box appropriately shows the back of the Aston Martin with the taillights and it kind of peeling through some more like water on the street there or something as well as the picture of the actual car and kind of comparing the Lego car to the real car as well as the thumb tab which is a little bit annoying. But overall I'm really happy with the kind of no time to die themed box art in the set. It looks really nice. The boxing the set is fairly easy as of course as thumb tabs so you kind of have to tear the box apart a little bit just to get to the inside but by doing that we get access to the two bags of bricks as well as the very large sticker sheet and the semi lacking instruction manual apparently all of these summer sets instructions manual are just like the Aston Martin where they have a crappy render of the set on there and it just looks terrible I mean it's possibly saving ink which would be better for the environment but like man does it look bad the instruction manual shows the two bags that build these sets the first set I've actually seen that has this little gray stud that actually moves along the build while you do it, which is really cool. It also, of course, has a parts list on the back and some advertisements for some other Speed Champion sets on there. Overall, not a ton going on with the instructions, just a very, very bad rendered version of that. And this is the first James Bond minifigure that we've ever gotten. The minifig is supposed to be based off the Daniel Craig appearance of Bond, and while it does look really good, I have some major problems with this minifigure. My biggest problem being Bond's hairpiece. The hairpiece is straight up wrong. Like, it is wrong. Daniel Craig usually has pretty short hair. He has never had a crappy comb over in any Bond movie. I really don't know what Lego is thinking with this hair piece because it almost ruins the figure. Well, I do think his frown is just a little bit off. I do think it kind of represents Daniel Craig's face pretty well and I also really, really love the tuxedo that they gave him. The jacket and bow tie with the pocket square makes really well with the leg printing. I didn't even know this figure had leg printing, honestly, until I had it in hand. The torso and leg print is unique and amazing. I also gave him a bit of back printing for his torso, which is really nice. And unfortunately, there is no second face on this figure, which is just kind of disappointed in my opinion. And while this is a more spontaneous bond that I think a lot of us wanted to see, we got a wrench. A wrench. Now I honestly didn't really expect them to give Bond alcohol or drugs in the set as it's marketed as Aiden up, but a wrench is just very disappointing. Bond with a wrench is not a very pretty sight, and I honestly like the figure without it. I'm probably just gonna put it in my brick bin after this review. At the end of the day, the head, torso, and legs are amazing, but the hair and the wrench are just an utter nightmare. But putting aside the Bond figure for a moment shows the actual car, which is just spectacular. The design of this car is absolutely gorgeous. I was really worried when I first saw the pictures that the set would be too like boring and square but they run off the edges like perfectly and it's very like round and not super square which I definitely appreciate. But this set really looks beautiful from any angle that you look at it which is a very hard feat to accomplish. It looks spectacular. Starting at the front of the model we have the headlights in the grill which just look absolutely incredible. It has the exact same design just mirrored for both headlights of the Aston Martin and it uses a brand new piece just for this set I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure, not 100% sure and it looks really 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 cool. I've never seen a piece like this before but thankfully it's a print and it works really really well for the headlights. I do wish there was some way that, that you could like replace it with machine guns or something like in no time to die but I kind of understand why they didn't do that because it'd just be too much. The front grill of the Aston Martin looks really nice. It basically uses two pieces which does create a small gap but it's not really super noticeable so I don't mind it that much and thankfully it's also printed which is a breath of fresh air. The Aston Martin logo on the hood of the car is in fact a sticker which is just a little bit disappointing but it gets the job done pretty well I think. It also has a bumper which was made in like the chrome silver piece which looks really cool it kind of wraps around the front of the car and it looks absolutely beautiful it uses really cool techniques to make it happen and it looks great and we also have the license plate and the two horn pieces and we will get to those later on the review the front hood part actually used a technique that i had never seen before where you basically put this piece in loosely like without connecting it at all and then you put another piece on top of it so it's basically loose in there but it can't move around it's absolutely brilliant it really just shows how much effort the designers put into it like i've never seen a technique like that it's also probably worth 
noting that the entire front can just move up and down so you can basically make the car eat something small. It's obviously a really weird function that wasn't really meant to be in the set. We're gonna move on to the tires which actually have a custom hubcap piece which is really really cool. Like it works so well for the Aston Martin and it really looks like an Aston Martin tire. So they're really cool. You obviously have them on all four wheels. The side of the car looks really really good until you get up close and personal with it and you find out it has these hideous stickers. It's got a sticker for the DB5 logo and the handle for the door as well as a little divot in the car which is all good. They don't really match the rest of the Aston Martin really well. Like it's a different kind of color of gray. It's a bit lighter and it just kind of sticks out like a sore thumb on the model. First time I saw the Aston Martin in the pictures I was not a fan of how the back of it looked but in person it actually looks really really cool. There is a small DB5 sticker which I found basically impossible to get right. I don't know what was up with the sticker but I could not get it right. But we have the license plate on there which looks nice as well as the Aston Martin logo which is another sticker on a curved piece which I don't really like that much but it gets the job done again and looks pretty good I think. The rest of the backside used this really cool technique that I had never seen before that yet again was very complicated but works really well. It's just like an incredibly designed set really. The taillights on the Aston Martin used another piece that I'm not really familiar with. I'm not really sure if it's exclusive to this set or not but it really gets the job done. I really like how it looks. Thankfully it is a print and it looks incredible for the headlights like it just works perfectly. It has the same sort of silver bumper that wraps around the car as on the front side and it still looks really good on the back. We also have a tiny little exhaust pipe on the bottom which just looks great as well as the two horn pieces again. My problem with the horn pieces is that they get bent out of shape a lot. Like literally anytime you bump it or even move the car then it feels like they just move a tiny bit. Like every time you touch them they just move. It's incredibly annoying because they don't look good bent out of shape at all. Also worth noting that with the license plates you actually get eight other replacements ones from different movies. I'm not a big enough Bond fan where I could just tell you like which one of these plates is from which movie but it's really cool to get all these replacement ones from different movies that you can switch out. Accessing the interior of the model is fairly easy. You can basically just pop off the back piece and this is in fact an exclusive piece just for this set which is amazing. Just like the stickers it's kind of the wrong color of gray like it doesn't really match the rest of the gray of the Aston Martin which really sucks. But we can also pretty easily actually take the windshield piece off to get a very good look at the all black interior of the model which just looks beautiful. Now obviously this set has the two seats up front but it also has a back seat which is something the big Aston Martin didn't even have and it's really cool to actually get a small back seat in the Aston Martin DB5. But we have the driver's seat on the right side up front as well as a little AC which is yet another sticker as well as a little driving stick down there which is a neat little detail. There's also a tiny lever which would activate the ejector seat in the real car and it's super cool that they include this tiny detail. Obviously it doesn't actually work but it really shows how Lego went above and beyond with the little details in the set which I really appreciate. And while this isn't really in the movies the seat can actually recline so we can have James Bond take a little nap in the back. But it's pretty easy to get Bond to connect down into the seat there and then all you have to do is put the windshield back and put the roof back and boom James Bond is driving his Aston Martin DB5. You can see him for pretty much any angle of the windows and he looks pretty cool driving in there. And a detail that's not really advertised at all but is definitely a thing you can do with the set is that it is pretty easy to convert this to the convertible version of the Aston Martin DB5. It's not really in any of the movies but Aston Martin DB5 convertibles are in fact a thing and it's really cool how you can in fact turn it into one. We can even fit James Bond wife and kid into the convertible which I am obviously making up. But by taking the kid out we can in fact fit James Bond and his wife into the convertible. And it fits two minifigures in the car are very well, which is nice. At the end of the day, should you buy the LEGO Speed Champions James Bond Aston Martin DB5, I really am going to go ahead and say, heck yes, go for it. $20 for 298 pieces is a really good deal, and it's an incredibly complicated and fun build. But unfortunately, the set has quite a few pretty big flaws. The James Bond minifigure is just straight up kind of disappointing, and the stickers on the model just don't look very good at all. Even though it's a brand new piece for the back of the car, it's still a very wrong color of gray that's different from the rest of the car and the horns get bent out place way too easily. But if you can look past those four main things that I think are wrong with the set, then this set is absolutely killer. Like it is amazing. The design is just mind-bogglingly good and it's just an incredible set. It's just amazing. I've been wanting more James Bond sets for years and it's finally here and it's definitely worth the wait. It's really good. And thank you guys so much for 300 subscribers. This is an amazing milestone to hit that I've been working for for a long time now. So thank you guys so much for that. And this is Seabrook Productions signing off for now. Make sure to like and subscribe if you'd like to stay up to date with my latest content and I will see you guys later. Peace out. Bye.